Hello everyone. This is Shilpi Maitra, Assistant Professor of English in Falakata College, Alipurduar, under North Bengal University. Today's lesson plan is based on the poem Hunger by Jayanta Mahapatra. This particular poem is in core course 3 under Indian classical literature and Indian writing in English for second semester English honor students. Now, since we have less time in our hands, we should go directly to the significance of the poem. As the title suggests, hunger itself has been divided or itself has a dual appeal. Or we can also say that the title itself is a manifestation of two meanings. The first hunger means the hunger for food. And the second hunger means the hunger for flesh or carnal desires that are subdued by the human beings. As we go through the poem, we know that the protagonist is a young man who is torn between his guilty conscience and his sexual hunger. The narrator is a very poor fisherman who has to sell or we can say that he has to force his daughter into prostitution because it is difficult for them to manage food on a regular basis. Now when we are speaking about the narratorial voice, we must remember that we have two narrators or there are double intonations or double personifications. Double persona is also present in this particular poem. One tone is that of the old fisherman and the second tone is that of the young man so here we find that this particular poem is divided between two narratorial voices one is from the aspect of the fisherman and the second one is from the aspect of the young man we can figure out the helplessness in the fatty tone of the fisherman who tries to tempt the young man by asking him to have her or to have his daughter. It might show his careless, detached and cold manner but in reality he is very concerned about his daughter when he reminds the narrator that she had just turned 15 and he will be back soon. It might sound very ironical once we go through the lines of this poem, but we must never forget the desperate tone of the fisherman. The imagery of the fish and the human flesh has been used time and again to show how hunger becomes a major element of desperation and frustration for the old man who also suffers from the pangs of a guilt-ridden conscience. The question that emerges or can surface almost inadvertently is whether he fails as a father or not. A father is considered to be a god, a life giver, who is supposed to be the protector of the daughter. But here he is confined by the cruel shackles of poverty. As a life giver, he is unable to see his daughter die in front of his eyes because of hunger. Therefore, he goes for the only option that is available in front of him at present. As a sensitive reader, we must never underestimate his present condition. And we should always understand how difficult, how extremely difficult it had been for a wretched father like him to trade his only daughter to sustain themselves or to gather some food. Jayanta Mahapatra, as an outstanding poet, has justified the main theme in a very poignant manner. We, the readers, also come to understand the abject sense of poverty and destitution is one of the crucial realities of India where we can see why many girls fail to bloom in a natural and beautiful manner. In this poem, we can easily visualize and feel the dilemma of the young man. He seems as if 
he is driven by his desires to satiate his sexual hunger his mind seems to be divided as his desire tries to silence the moral conscience of his mind the war that is beautifully presented by the poet is between the flesh and the spirit jayanta mahapatra had projected one of the primitive battles of the human kind the fascinating evening and the scenario the beautiful picturesque nature and the scintillating presentation of the wind the sea the sand and the silvered colored fish lacks the luster as the young man enters the house which stands like a wound the diseased and wounded existence of the father and the daughter is hinted in the second paragraph as they fight with the dire consequences of being alive it is not only the physical wound but also the mental wound that have been aggravated or engraved within their souls the last paragraph picturizes the daughter who is not even an adult but the sparkles of youth is absent in her she is a person who exists only for the sake of existence she is someone who suffers from the existential crisis because she does not understand the real purpose and meaning of life it is not only because she is very young and she is not even an adult that she cannot figure out what is the real nature of her existence but she has been thrusted into a profession which is unlike to her age and also this is something which is not according to her choice she tries to play her role in a very mechanical manner and the young narrator can actually sense the hunger within her legs if we go through the second paragraph we can see the flickering concepts of darkness and lights now these flickering concepts or this flickering forms of light and darkness is actually the residual parts of the human mind the human mind that is divided by the dark and the light aspects or between something which is morally good and something which is morally bad in the third paragraph which is very significant for the entire theme you find the picturization of not only the daughter but also of the father he speaks in a very sympathetic tone he is not a careless father probably he has been thrusted he has been forced to become a careless father because he does not have any other option in his hand and therefore we the readers can actually hear him saying or the pathetic tone in which he says my daughter she has just turned 15 feel her i will be back soon your bus leaves at 9 so when we go through these two lines we the readers can actually hear him saying and we can feel the desperate tone the sympathetic tone he is someone who is begging for pity he wants to be pitied because of his condition and he also reminds the young man that his daughter is not an adult and he actually confines him with a time bound aspect so that he does not ravish her totally or he does not destroy her completely the sky fell on me this sky which fell on him fell actually on both the personas both on the fisherman and also on the young man because this is the burden of guilt this is not only the burden of flesh but it is also the burden of guilt and we the readers can actually sense and hear the father's exhausted wail his cry which he is trying to succumb he is trying to subdue and we fear that probably one day he is going to succumb because of this extension or this extended form of guilt that he carries within himself 
and here also we find how the daughter has been described she is long and lean her ears were cooled as rubber this is not a very beautiful figurization this is not a very beautiful aspect of description of a young lady she opened her warmy legs wide i felt the hunger there the other one the fish slithering turning inside so when we go through these last two lines we can actually feel that the fish is a representation of the young girl just like the fish the young girl is also slithering and turning inside out because of the agonizing position that she has been forced within and also the last line also suggests the fact that this is not the first time that she has been forced into prostitution so i hope all of you like this short lesson plan and i hope it will help most of the students who have heard me thank you for your patient hearing wish you all the best for your exams